Hello and good day guys, Jesse here, and today I'm doing a follow-up to my Sega Ports video. This time it's all about old school Nintendo hardware pulling off some new tricks. I'm showing off some fun, fan-made conversions of games previously available on other platforms, as well as some new and noteworthy homebrew games for the NES, SNES, and Game Boy. After the break, we'll dive in. Stick around. First off is this incredible port of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the Game Boy Color. Developed by Z80 Artist, I was so impressed with the footage I'd seen on YouTube I felt compelled to reach out to its creator for a playable ROM, and he graciously obliged. A link to his channel will be in the description. Now, Mortal Kombat is no stranger to the Game Boy, but most official versions were terrible. This version, while incomplete, features a large roster with authentic voice samples and sound effects, all while running at 60 FPS. Right away it's easy to recognize each character, and pulling off special attacks are as easy as its console brethren. Currently fatalities aren't implemented, and certain characters are missing animations, but it's still being worked on. I cannot share the ROM as I did not receive permission, but I'm sure it'll be released to everyone eventually. Check out his channel to show your support. If you're not convinced, let's look at the official version of Mortal Kombat 3 for the Game Boy. It's ugly as hell. The nightmares have stopped, thanks to you, Z80 Artist. Next up is Alter Ego. It was originally released for the ZX Spectrum. This NES port was released by Shiru. Alter Ego is a platforming puzzle game with a twist. The goal is to collect all the bouncing pixels in each level, and you must swap positions with your alter ego to do so. Each stage gives you a limit of how many times you can swap. It starts out easy, but it doesn't take long for the difficulty to ramp up. Certain pixels can only be picked up by one or the other, and if you run out of lives, it's game over and back to the start. The music is a wonderful and whimsical addition, especially since the original had none. Check it out if you're up for a challenge. This next port is more well known, but still worth a mention. Classic Kong is a conversion of the arcade hit Donkey Kong for the Super Nintendo. Developed by Bubble Zap, it features all four levels from the original, unlike Nintendo's own NES version. The graphics and audio have been appropriately updated for the 16-bit hardware, but it plays it a bit too safe. It would have been nice to see new levels or remix mechanics, but SNES homebrew seems to be uncommon compared to other classic systems. I've heard tales of it being quite difficult to code for. Still, Donkey Kong is a great game, and this port could have been far worse. On to our first original title. Tobu Tobu Girl is the story of a girl whose cat floats away attached to a balloon. Developed by Tangram and complemented by an amazing soundtrack by Potato Ton, who would have thought a simple climbing game like Doodle Jump could have so much charm? Instead of an endless climber, each level has an end. The challenge isn't how you get there. There are baddies to bounce on, but it's not always enough. Holding B lets you fly, but your energy quickly depletes. Holding down and pushing A stomps your living platforms and gets your energy back. You can also perform a triple jump by holding up and pressing A. Each stage has its own theme, and it gets tricky rather quickly. Collect clocks to extend your time, and watch out for spikes that result in instant death. There's more here than meets the eye. In execution, it's outrageously addicting. Doing well puts you in an almost trance-like state, and dying would frequently cause me to cry out in anger. Damn it, I really want to get this little girl her cat back. This is a great new addition to the Game Boy Library. Check it out and let its cuteness take a hold of you. Our last game for this video is Unholy Night for the Super Nintendo. It was developed by a group of former SNK developers who formed the team Foxbat. Visually, it's dripping with the style that SNK games are known for. There's several modes available, such as Story, Versus, Survival, and Practice. The roster consists of six playable characters. In addition to standard and special attacks, you can build up energy to unleash a super move. Holding L or R charges your meter. The gameplay is standard one-on-one, -on -one, but the controls work well and it feels polished for a new fighter on such old hardware. I'd put it up there with the likes of the SNES version of Street Fighter Alpha 2. 
Unholy Night isn't as intense as Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear, but if you're a game collector or a fan of weapon-based fighting games, you owe it to yourself to try it out. That's all for now. I want to give another special thanks to Z80, and I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Are there any awesome games I missed? Let me know in the comments and I might cover them in a future installment with a shout out. Consider liking or subscribing if you'd like to support me. I'll see you next time. Keep on gaming.